It's been roughly 6 months since the launch of the Google Pixel 7, but in this review I'll give some insight that will be a little bit more relatable, speaking more of the user experience while using the phone as opposed to just talking about specifications. I noticed the Pixel 7's onboarding is quite seamless, there are multiple ways for you to start up the phone, like you could use voice and you can skip most of the process if you're in a hurry. I've made a setup video if you need to know how to set your Pixel from start, you can watch that after this video, I'll leave a link in the description and also leave a pop-up in one of the cards. Okay, let's talk about the screen of the Pixel. If you remember, the Google Pixel 6 had a 6.4 inch display and a 90Hz screen refresh rate. But this year, the Pixel 7 has almost the same exact spec, with the exception from actually being less than an inch smaller, it comes with a 6.3 inch this time. Now, the size reduction is almost invisible to the eye, though when you're watching the NBA playoffs on the Pixel 7, it's so livid and the color construct is amazing. But what's even cooler is using the Pixel directly under sunlight. It saw some improvement from last year's own with now having 1000 nits which makes a whole difference when you're using the phone under direct sunlight. So what's making the Pixel 7 really special? I'll tell you, the most noticeable upgrade from the Pixel 7 is more of a software than a hardware upgrade. The Pixel 6 was plagued with so many bugs and errors that it seemed the more Google tried to fix them, the worse it became. But looking at the Pixel 7, a lot of these bugs have actually been caught and fixed on time. The heating has reduced tremendously, which shows a better processing, cooling and optimization. Also a more fluid display which shows and handles battery performance very much well. And speaking of the battery, the battery of the Pixel 7 comes with a 4355 mAh which according to Google should give you close to 72 hours of battery, that if you use it under extreme battery saver. If we are being honest and under normal conditions, you should be able to enjoy 6 to 7 hours actively. When I used the Pixel 7, it was giving me close to 6 to 7 hours. I didn't use it for a lot of heavy lifting stuff, but like my daily average usage, the Pixel 7 got me through my day. So definitely if you use the battery well and optimize it, it will get you through the day, but just carry power bank just to be sure. So let's talk more about some of the software upgrades. The Google Pixel 7 is powered by the Google Tensor G2. Now this is a powerful custom processor built with Google AI and this makes the Pixel perform like an absolute monster. But what do you get with a processor like that? Well, for starters, the speech to text feature or what most of you might call the voice dictation feature, right? So this allows you to record and easily transcribe speech to text. And what I noticed was the accuracy, the punctuation, and even his ability to notice when another user was speaking. Now, Google has tried to increase its accessibility with features like the guided access for selfie, an amazing feature that helps visually impaired users take almost accurate selfie by navigating the user properly on how to place the phone. Also, with clear voices due to speech enhancement, you still eliminate a lot of background noise. So if you're making a call in a noisy environment, the other person can still hear you clearly to an extent. Now this is somewhat similar to the voice isolation that works on the iPhone but I feel Google does it better. The good thing about all of this amazing feature is that Google has also promised 3 years of software updates and 5 years of security updates which would mean that for the next 3 years your Google Pixel 7 will keep getting software updates which would be a big boost and a time saver and also a money saver for you if you're not thinking of upgrading in the nearest future. And by the way, if you're loving this video, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. We're trying to get this channel to 1000 subscribers so I can have the motivation to continue doing this. So like and subscribe to this channel. So the Google Pixel comes with three speakers, one at the top and two at the bottom of the phone. And it gives you this whole stereo speaker experience. And this comes in very handy when you're holding the phone or if the phone is on a surface and you need to listen to music or a movie. You and I know the Google Pixel will never be complete without talking about these boys here, the camera. Now on paper it has a 50 megapixel wide and a 12 megapixel ultra wide. I don't pay too much attention to these figures as a lot of company constantly overspec their cameras but only when I test it by myself and I was actually surprised by the results I got. Now what I first noticed is the speed in which it took to update the pictures you've taken. You would literally notice that the Google Pixel is processing the pictures you've taken after you've done it but what I noticed was it was doing it faster than the Pixel 6 and the previous generation of Pixel. So I absolutely love it. Now Google skin tone accuracy is also one of the closest I've seen as it handles both people of colors and also different color textures closest than most other phones do without overly saturating it and making it look totally completely fake. But here are some cool features that the Google Pixel software comes in play with the camera that you didn't know you could do. Now the first is the magic eraser. This is a feature that allows you to take off anyone from your photo by just scrubbing over them and they are gone. Now this won't work 
as well as a photo processing software like Photoshop. But for the ease of use and convenience, this does a really, really good job. Another amazing feature is the photo on blur. Now this feature helps sharpen blurred images used to improve the visibility and focus. Though I tried to take some images and it was actually harder than I thought to take a blurred image and then move it to, to the Google Pixel to kind of unblur it. So what I did was look for an old blurred image and moved it there and tried to work the magic on it. And to my surprise, it was actually quite a noticeable difference. The zoom feature, which I don't necessarily use every day, but on the Google is quite impressive for what it can do. Now I noticed that when I zoomed in at different aspect ratio, the pictures kept getting better, which means that, well, not necessarily better, but Google just kept improving the quality of the video as it went, which means it took all the details in some of the images and then cropped it to kind of maintain those details in it. Now, this doesn't do it as well as the Samsung or any dedicated zoom phone, but I feel like the Google Pixel does enough with the zoom and the zoom feature is not something that you would use every day. So it actually does the job for me. One of the best part is the night photography. The night photography on the Pixel is really, really good. It was very hard to get a pitch black place for me to take some pictures. So I turned off the lights in the studio and took these pictures. Then I decided to take some more out at night, but with the help of the street light, it wasn't totally dark, but you can see how the Pixel held very very well and if you flip it over to the video aspect the pixel can shoot at 4k 60 fps but i don't shoot at 60 fps unless i need to so i tried the 4k 30 fps so this is the front facing camera just walking on the road by the roadside i think it looks pretty decent it looks really nice and it's adding like subtle brightness to the screen which comes in handy especially for night photography or night cinematography I'll be switching to the front camera, so we'll check how that also looks. And I think this is pretty decent also. But this would be a little bit sharper. Let me just check if it's 4K. If you notice the audio coming out directly from the Pixel, though not as good as a microphone, it is okay for you to hear clearly. So I really wanted to test how the processor will handle intense graphics, so I downloaded one of the most intense graphic games I know, which is Call of Duty Mobile, and push the specs to the max to see how much the pixel will take before I started noticing optimal performance drop. It wasn't my best gaming experience, and for some reason, I couldn't max out the graphics. I don't know why, I don't think it was the game or the phone's fault, but I just couldn't max it out. It kept stepping it down to one of the closest to the max graphics. It lagged a little bit, but this phone is not built to be a gaming experience, but it handled the game pretty well for like an average gamer. So if your life is not totally dependent on gaming, this phone will also do that for you. Though after all of this, will I recommend the Pixel 7? Let's take a recap. It's the same price with the Pixel 6 as $599, but it's way better and compared to the Pixel 7 Pro, which is almost $300 more expensive, I would definitely recommend the Pixel 7. You save money, you have 3 years software update, you experience a truly built up Android experience and seamless integration with the Google ecosystem, which still needs a lot of work, but that will be a story for another day. Here are two videos you should watch, one on how to set up your Google Pixel from start and a daily use of the S23 in my life. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it brought you value. Let's get this channel to 1000 subscribers. Guys, do it for the boys! See you next time.